At a lively reunion with 100 attendees, I was enjoying chatting with my old classmates. Then, Michael, who claims to be an elite manager, showed up. He looked at me and snorted. I'm a manager at a top-ranking company. You're nothing compared to me. In front of everyone, he looked down on me. Michael has always seemed to think he's better than me. Thanks to him, the fun reunion was ruined. But right after that, Michael faced a rude awakening. My name is Kevin, and I'm 30 years old. I currently work at a top company in the sales department, and I'm busy every day. People who knew me in the past might be surprised to see how much I've changed. That's because I used to be timid and quiet, and was unable to stand up to anyone. There was a reason for that. Before I was old enough to remember, my mother passed away. So, my father raised me by himself. However since he was busy with work, my grandmother mostly took care of me. She did her best to look after me and showered me with love. Thanks to her, I never felt the loneliness of not having a mother. One day, there was a parent's day at elementary school. Naturally, my grandmother came to see me. When she saw me in the classroom, she waved with a big smile. A few classmates saw this and laughed out loud. Your mom's not here, huh? Poor kid. Other classmates looked at me with pity. It was the first time I'd been called poor, and I couldn't hide my shock. They also made fun of my clothes, saying, you're wearing those because you don't have a mom, huh? You're so lame. I couldn't express the feeling in words. From then on, I gradually became quiet and more withdrawn. Some classmates continued to make fun of me. I couldn't understand why I had to go through this just because my mother wasn't around. But most of my classmates stood up for me, so I was able to enjoy elementary school. After graduating elementary school and moving on to junior high and high school, I started to feel the need to change my personality. I didn't want to be teased for the rest of my life. I absolutely didn't want to live that kind of life. So, I began to actively join groups of friends and socialize. I also worked hard at my studies, which I wasn't good at. Gradually, I became more outgoing. After that, no one teased me anymore. After graduating from high school, I got a job at my current company. I considered going to college, but with my father's salary, it was difficult, so I gave up. Job hunting with just a high school diploma was tough, and I was rejected by many companies at the application stage. But I didn't give up and eventually got an offer from my current company. I worked with the intention of dedicating my life to the company that hired me. Fortunately, neither my colleagues nor my superiors looked down on me for only having a high school diploma, so I was able to focus on my work. I was grateful for that environment every day. Two years after starting my job, I attended my coming-of-age ceremony. My grandmother bought me a fine suit for the occasion. Kevin, you look great. I can't believe my little, weak grandson has grown up so much. I'm so happy. She said so with tears of joy. I was deeply moved as well. I vowed to become the kind of person who could repay my grandmother for all she had done for me. Entering the large venue for the coming-of-age ceremony, I saw it was filled with new working adults in formal attire. I scanned the area for any familiar faces and soon a few classmates approached me. They were my classmates from elementary school. My heart raced with excitement at seeing them after such a long time. But then, I saw the person I least wanted to encounter. That person was walking straight towards me. I instinctively looked down. Kevin. Long time no see. It was Michael, my classmate from elementary school. He placed his hand on my shoulder as he spoke. I flinched by reflex. Seeing my reaction, Michael started laughing. You're still as timid and weak as ever. So, which college are you attending? Whose fault do you think it is that I'm like this? I felt a bit of anger but answered honestly. I'm not in college. I'm working now. When I said that, Michael laughed even harder. Not in college? I knew you were useless. Who doesn't go to college these days? Hearing Michael's words, the other classmates fell silent. Treating a classmate he hadn't seen in years as worthless. Michael's character was still rotten. But I was used to this from Michael. He had teased me relentlessly in elementary school. Yes, the one who led the teasing back then was Michael. Michael would constantly target me, making degrading comments about my poverty. His family was wealthy, 
and he couldn't believe that I was being raised by my grandmother. At first, I ignored him, but then an incident happened that made it impossible to ignore him. It was during a recess at elementary school. Suddenly, Michael started shouting that his wallet was missing. Bringing wallets to school was against the rules. So none of us, including me, even knew he had brought one. But Michael claimed someone had stolen it. The thief is someone in this classroom. Then, unbelievably, he accused a classmate of being the thief. The classroom fell silent. And from that moment, my nightmare began. Suddenly, Michael grabbed my backpack and turned it upside down. I was stunned by his action. Michael! What are you doing? Stop it! Despite my protests, Michael didn't stop. He emptied my backpack and started going through my desk. The only one poor enough to steal my wallet is you. Give it back. I hadn't taken Michael's wallet. I couldn't understand why I was being accused and felt utterly confused. Hearing the commotion, the teachers came into the classroom. After we explained the situation, they urged Michael to look elsewhere. But Michael insisted, Kevin stole my wallet. He hates that I'm rich. What a thing to say. I had never envied Michael. Who would want to be like someone so rotten? I remember feeling my body heat up with anger. But in the next moment, Michael found his wallet inside his own desk. Everyone around widened their eyes with surprise. Despite having accused me of stealing, Michael laughed as if nothing had happened. There it is. Thank goodness. I almost got in trouble with my mom for losing my wallet. What was there to be thankful for? I had almost been falsely accused of theft. But Michael didn't care about my feelings and didn't even apologize. Seeing this, the teacher asked him to apologize to me, but Michael uttered something shocking. Kevin is poor, that's why he was suspected. It's not my fault. It's Kevin's fault for being poor and motherless. I couldn't believe my ears. Why did I have to hear such things from Michael? I decided to avoid him as much as possible from then on. At that moment, I made a vow to myself. However, since we were in the same class, Michael continued to bother me. Each time, it was a miserable experience. After graduating from elementary school, I thought I was finally free from Michael. But running into him again at the coming-of-age ceremony was really unfortunate. As I remained silent, my classmates tried to help me out. Working instead of going to college is impressive. Hearing this, Michael snorted. What's so impressive about that? He probably just didn't want to study. Unlike you, I'm studying business at a top university. Shows how much smarter I am than you. I wanted to get away from Michael as quickly as possible, so I decided to just listen to him without reacting. A top university? That's impressive, Michael. But deep down, I didn't mean it at all. My classmates seemed to understand my true feelings and started to ignore Michael's boasting as well. Michael, satisfied with his bragging, finally walked away. I thought I would never see him again. I felt relieved from the bottom of my heart. But fate was cruel. Ten years later, I turned 30. To celebrate my grandmother's 80th birthday, I took her to a high-end seafood restaurant. The restaurant was a hidden gem in an alleyway, known only to a few. Knowing my grandmother loved seafood, I was sure she would enjoy it. With excitement, I walked in with my grandmother. The restaurant was cozy with only counter seating, run by a single owner chef. My grandmother was impressed by the place. Is it okay to dine at such an expensive place? My grandmother asked me worriedly. The owner chef smiled at my grandmother's words. Today's your special day, madam. Don't worry and enjoy anything you like. My grandmother happily started ordering. Every dish the chef prepared was delicious, and our conversation flourished. Seeing her so happy, I thought about bringing her here again. As I was thinking this, the restaurant door suddenly swung open. A loud voice came from behind me. Fancy meeting you here. It must be fate, huh? I turned around, recognizing the unpleasant voice, to see Michael grinning with a woman by his side. My heart sank. Running into him again, especially during this celebration, was truly unfortunate. I decided to leave before my mood was completely ruined. Just as I was helping my grandmother up from her seat after finishing our meal, it happened. 
Michael started talking about himself again. This is my fiancé. We're getting married soon. You might recognize her. He introduced the woman standing next to him. She looked somewhat familiar, but I couldn't place her. Then Michael continued, proudly. It's Alyssa, the cutest girl in our elementary school class. Don't you remember? Maybe you didn't care because you were such a gloomy guy. Alyssa. Oh, that's right, I vaguely remember her. But it didn't matter to me at all. Congratulations, I said, trying to leave the restaurant. But Michael wouldn't stop talking. If you want, I can introduce you to someone good too. Though, they'd probably hate a dull guy like you. I couldn't believe he was belittling me in front of my grandmother. I was shocked that Michael's character hadn't changed at all in 10 years. My grandmother's face turned worried in an instant. I could see the owner chef watching us anxiously from behind the counter. I started shaking with anger and, without responding, hurried out of the restaurant with my grandmother. I didn't need Michael to introduce me to any women. I was seething with rage. Once outside, my grandmother looked at me with concern. Did something happen between you two? He was being very rude. To ease her worries, I lightly explained that Michael had teased me in elementary school. He's always been like that. He's not worth worrying about. I'm better than him now. Hearing this, my grandmother looked relieved and began to smile. Kevin, you've become so strong. You used to come crying to me over the smallest things. You've really grown up. Come on, Grandma, I'm 30 now. I replied, laughing with her. Despite Michael's unwelcome appearance, the birthday celebration turned out to be very enjoyable. But I couldn't shake the feeling of unease. Why did I keep running into Michael, someone I didn't want to see? Was this some kind of fate? I hoped I wouldn't see him again. Seeing him always brought me down. But fate was not so kind. A few days later, I was at work as usual. It was a day for outside sales. As I walked with my colleague Mark, I saw Michael ahead of us. I was speechless at my bad luck. Again. I thought, trying to walk past him without being noticed. But Michael spotted me. He immediately approached and started talking. Your company is around here? I can't believe a high school graduate like you found a job. Must be a third-rate company, no need to ask. Michael sneered at me. Mark, who was with me, was shocked at Michael's words. Yeah, my company is just over there. It might be a third-rate company. I responded, trying to end the conversation. Michael laughed again. That poor company, stuck with a useless, dull guy like you. No wonder their performance is poor. I should lend you some of my brains. Here we go again. Michael just couldn't resist looking down on me. I was too exasperated to even respond. Mark, standing beside me, looked irritated and said, Kevin, we need to get going, it's a waste of time dealing with someone like him. Michael's face turned red with anger. But I followed Mark's advice and said, I'm heading out for sales calls now. I'm busy, so see you around, and started walking away. Michael, still fuming, shouted after us. I'm sacrificing my valuable time to talk to you useless people. You should be grateful. Both Mark and I were speechless. Michael was unbelievably foolish. Then Mark, as if remembering something, shared a shocking fact with me. I was stunned when I heard it. A while later, I received a letter at my house. Opening it, I found it was an invitation to an elementary school reunion. An elementary school reunion. Michael would probably attend. If he did, he'd definitely look down on me again, so despite wanting to go, I thought it would be best to skip it. Just then, a classmate called to confirm my attendance. When I said I wanted to decline, the classmate asked, is it because Michael will be there? They must have remembered how Michael used to tease me in elementary school. I explained honestly that even after high school graduation, I had run into Michael a few times and endured his insults, so I didn't want to attend. The classmate then gave me some happy news. Don't worry. Michael isn't coming, he has other plans. So feel free to join us. Ha! Huh? Really? If Michael wasn't coming to the reunion, I had no reason not to go, so I decided to attend. Without Michael, it seemed like it would be a fun event, and I felt excited. 
On the day of the reunion, I dressed in the outfit I had prepared for the occasion and headed confidently to the venue. The reunion was held in a large restaurant in town, a grand event. It had been 18 years since elementary school graduation, but this was the first reunion. I was excited to see what everyone was up to and catch up with them. Entering the venue, I saw my classmates already gathered, enjoying conversations with wine glasses in hand. I quickly grabbed a drink and joined the group, enjoying the lively chats. Some classmates were married with children, sharing photos and stories. Then, a commotion arose near the entrance. I felt a sense of foreboding. My classmates and I turned our attention to the entrance. And I was frozen with fear. There stood Michael, with Alyssa by his side. Wasn't he supposed to be absent? I stood in shock, unable to move. A classmate hurried over to me. This morning, Michael called to say he was coming after all. I'm sorry for the late notice. The classmate looked apologetic. But since I was already there, I decided to stay unnoticed and quietly leave the venue. Unfortunately, Michael spotted me. As soon as he saw me, he walked over with a smug grin. Leaving already? I'm here too, let's chat more. Other classmates were watching me. Although I wanted to leave immediately, I didn't want to ruin the atmosphere. Reluctantly, I decided to stay a bit longer. One of the classmates spoke to Michael in surprise. I'm shocked. I never expected you to be dating Alyssa. Michael wore a smug expression. Back in those days, I didn't pay much attention to girls, but apparently, Alyssa was famous among the boys for being cute. Alyssa blushed. We met through a mutual friend. I heard there was someone who graduated from a prestigious university and worked at a top company. And it turned out to be Michael. We started dating and quickly decided to get married. Even I'm surprised at how fast it all happened. Everyone looked at Michael with envy. Michael, basking in their admiration, proudly said, we're getting married soon. I'd love it if you all could come to the wedding. Some people applauded and congratulated him. I envy that you are in the happiest time of your life. Graduating from a prestigious university really makes a difference. One classmate said, and Michael beamed. Well, I'm nothing like Kevin over there. If you end up like him, your life is over. I couldn't believe he would say something like that at a reunion. I was too shocked to speak. While I was struggling to contain my anger, Michael dropped a bombshell. I'm a manager at a top company. Unlike you, who will be stuck working at a third-rate company for the rest of your life? In front of 100 classmates, Michael looked down on me. I had reached my limit. Then, a classmate exclaimed in amazement. Aren't you working at that top company, Oakwood Corporation? Being a manager there is impressive. I was stunned. That couldn't be true. What was he talking about? I calmly asked Michael. Which department at Oakwood Corporation are you a manager of? Everyone turned their attention to Michael. He started to panic. What does it matter to you? Why should I tell you? A classmate nudged Michael, laughing. Come on, don't be shy. It's not like it costs you anything to tell us. A classmate said jokingly, making Michael even more flustered. Encouraged by the classmates, Michael reluctantly muttered in a small voice, uh, the sales department. Cheers erupted from the classmates. A sales manager at Oakwood Corporation? That's incredible. The sales department there is known for being highly competitive. Way to go, Michael. Michael looked proud again. But everything he said was a lie. I couldn't let him continue to deceive everyone. It was time to reveal the truth about Michael. Oh, really? Who approved the new manager? Ha! Huh? Michael looked confused. Everyone turned to me, puzzled. Michael, when did you become the sales manager at Oakwood Corporation? Michael blared at me. About six months ago. Why do you care? Even if you're jealous, you'll never work at Oakwood Corporation. Our classmates were holding their breath, watching the exchange. I couldn't help but laugh. What's so funny? Because, Michael, you becoming the sales manager at Oakwood Corporation is impossible. And you saying I could never work there is quite ironic. What? The room fell silent. 
Then, I revealed the truth. I'm the sales manager at Oakwood Corporation. My classmates stared at me with wide eyes, clearly in disbelief. No one seemed to believe what they were hearing. Michael seemed too shocked to speak. There's no way. You're just a high school graduate. High school grads can't work at Oakwood Corporation. You must be at some third-rate company. I showed Michael my business card, which I happened to have with me. It clearly stated that I was the sales manager at Oakwood Corporation. The classmates began passing my card around, and the room buzzed with excitement. Michael's face turned pale and he started to tremble. Kevin, a sales manager at Oakwood Corporation. Michael was completely bewildered. Indeed, Oakwood Corporation doesn't hire high school graduates now, but they did when I joined. I started in the sales department right out of high school. Michael looked even more shaken, almost collapsing. Yes, I actually work at Oakwood Corporation. Currently, I serve as the sales manager. The path to becoming a manager wasn't easy. Being a high school graduate meant I had to work harder than my college-educated colleagues. I spent countless hours working, sometimes even sleeping at the office. Through perseverance, I achieved top sales results in the department. This made me well-known within the sales team. And this spring, my efforts were recognized and I became the youngest manager in the company's history. I could hardly believe it myself when I got the promotion, it felt like a dream. Now, as a manager, I strive to make the sales department even better every day. That's why I knew it was impossible for Michael to be the sales manager at Oakwood Corporation. Moreover, Michael wasn't an employee of my company. Michael, what's going on? Alyssa, who had been quietly listening, raised her voice in shock. Other classmates were also puzzled. Does this mean Michael has been lying to us? The room erupted in murmurs. Michael stayed silent, not knowing what to say. Since he wouldn't admit it, I decided to reveal the truth. Why lie, Michael? You work in the sales department at Johnson Industries, a subsidiary of Oakwood Corporation, don't you? Michael looked at me in disbelief. Alyssa was stunned. How do you know that? Michael stammered, trembling. A loud voice emerged from the crowd. I told him. Do you remember me? Mark, with a sharp gaze, stared at Michael. Michael seemed to recognize him instantly and was taken aback. You're Mark from university. We were also in elementary school together, right? And you were with Kevin earlier. Are you also an employee at Oakwood Corporation? Yes, I am. You teased me endlessly back in elementary school, remember? When I found out we were going to the same university, I was really upset. But you seem to have forgotten all about me. Now, I'm working in the sales department at Oakwood Corporation. The classmates were in an uproar. Mark was actually my colleague. After graduating from F University, he joined Oakwood Corporation and he became my subordinate. Mark also grew up in a household without a mother, just like me. Because of this, Michael had bullied Mark in the same way he bullied me. Mark hated Michael and had tried to avoid any interaction with him from that point on. Unfortunately, he ended up at the same university as Michael but was in a different department, so he managed to graduate without being bullied. However, while we were out on a sales call, we ran into Michael. At that moment, Mark revealed that he had gone to the same university as Michael and told me about his job. Wait a minute, Mark graduated from F University, right? So Michael also went to F University? But didn't Michael say he graduated from T University? Michael started to get flustered again. Alyssa looked like she was about to cry, tears welling up in her eyes. Michael had lied to us about graduating from a prestigious university and also about working at a top company. How much did he need to boost his ego? Unbelievable. Where I graduated from and where I work is none of your business. Stop meddling. Michael finally snapped and started yelling. The classmates around us were stunned into silence. Don't boast about lies. Think about how Alyssa feels. Mark blared at Michael. But Michael didn't back down. Alyssa loves me. It doesn't matter whether I went to school or where I work. We're connected by true love. He said this with such a confidence. How could he say that after boasting with such false credentials? Alyssa stood there in shock and began to cry. 
You lied to my parents too. We've even had a formal engagement. How are you going to take responsibility? I hate liars. I can't marry you. Our classmates surrounded Alyssa, looking at her with pity. Michael was stunned by her words, his previous bravado gone. He started pleading to Alyssa. Alyssa, you said you loved me no matter what. I admit I lied about my background, but please don't say that. But Alyssa refused to even look at him. Of course. I wouldn't want to be involved with a liar even if I were in her position. Consider the engagement off. I can't do this anymore. Alyssa said and left the reunion hall. Michael desperately ran after her, leaving the venue as well. The hall fell into a stunned silence. I can't believe Michael was lying about all of this. At least the truth came out now. Alyssa would have been miserable otherwise. With Michael and Alyssa gone, we were free to reminisce and enjoy the rest of the reunion. A few days later, I arrived at the office as usual. There, I saw Mr. Johnson, the president of Johnson Industries, and Michael. I figured it was about the recent event. With that in mind, I approached the two of them. As soon as Mr. Johnson saw me, he began to apologize. I am deeply sorry for the trouble Michael has caused. We had no idea he was using your name to boast about a false position at Oakwood Corporation. Mr. Johnson looked sincerely apologetic. We truly had no idea he was lying about being the sales manager. Michael, apologize properly. Mr. Johnson urged Michael to apologize. But Michael, sulking, didn't move. Yes, Michael had been boasting in various places that he was the sales manager at Oakwood Corporation. Mark had discovered this and reported it to Johnson Industries. I was just joking around. Kevin and I are friends, so it's no big deal. Michael showed no sign of remorse. I had reached my limit. Michael and I are not friends. Since he shows no remorse, I expect appropriate action to be taken. When I said this, Michael turned pale. Mr. Johnson began to panic. Of course. We will consider Michael's position when we return to the company. Come on, Michael. Let's go. Michael suddenly stood up and clung to me. Kevin. I apologize for everything. Please, I'm begging you. I ignored Michael and walked away. It's too late for him to apologize now. He needs to deal with the consequences of his actions. Later, I heard through the grapevine that Michael and Alyssa's wedding was called off. Additionally, Mr. Johnson fired Michael from the company. Michael is now desperately hunting for a job, but in this small town, his reputation has quickly spread, and no company is willing to hire him. It seems it will be very difficult for Michael to find a new job anytime soon. But this is the natural consequence of involving so many people in his lies. Whatever happens to Michael from now on is none of my concern. I will continue to live my life with my head held high, 